Hey gang, Kevin here, Life22, and we're doing back-to-back -back book reviews today, and then uh, little Quinn wanted to do a podcast, and we'll try to squeeze out this month's life theming uh, probably next, but uh, this one is, uh, this is a book review for The Road to Wigan Pier by George Orwell. So this book was recommended to me by um, the great Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. Um, he mentioned it um, in some of his other recommendations, like... Uh, when he recommends to people to read um, the Gulag Archipelagos, all three volumes, the uncondensed version, which is something I've also done. Um, the Road to Wigan Pier, uh, so it's, essentially it's George Orwell's exploration into um, the harsh living uh, and working conditions of uh, industrial workers in the 1930s of, uh, of England. And he, um, uh, he talks about a lot of like the coal miners, um, the, but the book starts out with, uh, you know, and I, and I believe, and it's, it's hard to, to gather, but, um, because it's, let's see here. It's, well, it's eight hour listen, but, uh, seven, seven and three quarter hour listen. So, but he's, I, I believe it is George Orwell on his, on his journey to, uh, to understand, uh, the world around him and, uh, you know, He's kind of condemning, uh, he makes up, he kind of defends socialism to a degree towards the end of the book, um, but he also points out how a lot of people could get it wrong, and it's kind of like, because a lot of people don't, you know, and he, he, he kind of comes around a lot on a lot of these, he's, in his head he's negotiating these topics, like wouldn't it be great, a utopia, wouldn't it be great for this, wouldn't it be great for that, um, and he goes, but it, this type of person wouldn't see it that way, and this type of person wouldn't see it that way, and and this type of person would do this with it, and it would corrupt and corrode and and do this, and and it's like, it's fine on paper, kind of, you know, and uh, it kind of gives you some good insight if you didn't know that much about socialism, um, and you can see we're having the same problems now in America that they were having in the 1930s in in Wigan. Um, in Wigan with the coal miners and, and, and people on the dole and can barely afford anything and and how most landlords are actually just like people that owned houses that were also working and they just they sunk every dollar they had into their house and then they didn't have any money to fix them and they were falling apart and and just kind of like uh you know so it really just kind of gives you a good comparison to the 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 uh the the times right like it, it kind of shows you how how like in America, for example, like capitalism is a thing that rises all boats. Um, and this like, and just how like, you know, most people were on the dole and, uh, you know, getting, getting welfare to a degree and how many, like w what you qualified for. And, you know, like most of it wasn't, uh, wasn't like a living thing and it's, it's not supposed to be. And he points that out. But he also points out that it was like kind of like an unnecessary, unnecessary evil of the time. And how do you back out of a thing like that? Um, but more they dumped into it, the more it, be, it became an issue. And it was um, it was very it's very interesting to see his perspective. I know that he'll never convince me to be a socialist, um, but. I can see the fallacies of way back when or the fallacies of today and nobody seems to learn from the past on stuff like this. Um, but it is a very good representation. Um, a lot of Orwell's books are, are, are great. So, uh, I mean, his, his real enemy is communism, right? Like he does not like communism and he says, most socialism turns into communism and this is why. And, and he, he goes, he goes on and on about like a lot of things like that. And it's like, well, I, um, I mean, I wouldn't want to be making my way down that road. No pun intended. Well, I guess pun intended, right? I wouldn't want to be making my way down that road to social. If if utopia is a farce, then why would you walk down the road to utopia when it turns into the greatest crimes of humanity, right? Like, uh, I've been recently watching the uh, the series as being season three of What We Saw by Bill Whittle, um, uh, produced by the Daily Wire, and they, they're talking about, you know, the, the rise of uh, the rise of communist Russia and socialist Russia. And and so, like, me listening to this book and finishing this book up at the same time, I mean, it's really like, why would you, why would, if we know that it's a failed thing, it's great to think about, wow, what a dream to build this thing. But if we see, like, roadmap after roadmap after roadmap 
everybody who tries to go there realizes it's a mirage and you're actually in hell. Like, why would you even go down that road? Why would you go down that road if you know? Like, utopia sounds like a great thing. Everybody's happy. Ah, yeah, but guess what? It's not true. It's a farce. We have thousands of examples, millions of examples across thousand years of society showing with evidence and documentation as of mo even up to you know 50 years ago 100 years ago we're we have all these issues and they still think that it's okay to go down these roads and it's just because every you know what you can't uh you shouldn't be punished by the sins of the father um but you um i remember having this argument with my dad when i was a young lad and you know, he says, well, I learned these, you should learn from my mistakes. And sometimes kids have to make mistakes for their own. And, and I just wish that this was one of those mistakes that people didn't have to reteach themselves every society. Every single society should not, should learn from the previous society. It's like, you know what, maybe we don't do that. Maybe we stick to some of these tried and true measures and, and try to not follow our hedonic pleasures and, and let, let fascists take over and destroy the world and millions could die. Hey, why don't we avoid all that? Maybe that's the utopia. Maybe the utopia is not chasing fictitious dreams and letting others like pull the wool over our eyes. Maybe it's being educated and having an educated population. He talks about that. Most of the population wasn't educated. Most of these people lived in really horrible conditions. It's funny because nowadays it's like, wow, look at look at look at America. America's kind of great because it's like, oh, that house is unsafe. It's like, shit. That was like, go back to 1930 England. That was that's that's good. 20 times better than the best house then. So, it's just, it's it's funny to watch people scratch their heads and, and people weren't panicking back then either when they, when they had like, you know, some people didn't even have indoor plumbing. They had holes cut in the floor where you took a dump and then they had some other, like one of your weekly chores was to, you know, crawl through the chute and pull out all the sewage and bury it in the yard. Unless you just dug a hole in the yard and buried it, right? That was the, at the time of, uh, you know, you'd fill the hole in once a week, you know? And it was one of those, like, I don't know, it's just, it's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling to think of, like, all this stuff that we try to do. Or try to claim now is, like, the new terror, right? Like, oh, my God, somebody doesn't have a carbon monoxide detector. Hey, listen, modern technology has shown us what carbon monoxide is. It probably killed hundreds of thousands of people just in that small little town. Um... And so the issue is, um, is just it, 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 like we, we, what we claim to be is a, a nine, a, a five alarm fire today, um, is, hi Lennox. I was being good at church. You were being good at church? Awesome. High five. Sweet. You want to do a podcast with me in a minute? Uh, yeah. All right. Let me finish this book review and then we'll do one. Okay. Uh, about the little we we still have to do that. We can do that. Yeah. Uh, we can do the little owl, but we also have a month one to do. What one? April. Oh, the April. What's the April? I'll tell you in just a minute, okay? Uh, okay. All right. So I'll go get your sister, okay? Quinn's going to do this one. She'll do one too, yeah. You want to just uh, wait for me to finish. I'll come get you guys, okay? I'll get Quinn. All right, but then I'll come get you. Anyways, um... And, and and that's that right there is like part of the reason that we should be learning from the past so that like our kids don't end up like a lot of times like people in my father's generation or people in my generation that we could be he could too yeah let me finish this one okay can you shut the door for me can, okay can you shut this door for me all right thanks so it's one of those things. It's like people people could be selling their soul to people are sell, like are, are selling the soul of our nation and whatever for personal greed and hedonic pleasures now, and then they turn around and oh boy, I better I better uh, looks like I got somebody here. Um, I better wrap this up. So you know they they sell the the, the hedonic pleasures. 
uh, now for personal greed and whatnot. And then all of a sudden we end up in a social society that quickly turns to communism and quickly or, or fascism with a dictator. And then it quickly turns to hundreds of thousands of people getting sent to the gulags, millions of people getting sent to the gulags and getting put to death for no reason other than one person's pleasure one generation ago. And if we just learn from the past and and, and not go down those roads, or at least educate our kids on why we don't go down those roads instead of just saying, we're not going down that road. And you don't tell anybody you don't go down that road. You just tell them, so, don't go down that road. Why? Well, now I want to go down that road because I want to see what's down that road. No, you just explain to people what's down that road. You, not, not just, you can't do this. You can't do this and here's why. If you explain that to people or correct some of our education system, we're actually educating people on this stuff instead of teaching them how bad capitalism is, how bad democracy is, and how great communism and socialism is. Instead of doing that, how about we, instead of teaching people how great these other things that are failed are, we, we, should, be, we should be educating people. And so George Orwell's book, The Road to Wigan Pier, gives you great perspective. Um, ideologically, I don't think that I line up with George Orwell in a lot of different, uh, in a lot of different things, but this is, um, this is, this is a good book on perspective on 1930s Russia or uh, 1930s England. Um, and I think it really brings him into, uh, I believe this book was written probably before, uh, 1984. Um, and, but it does give you good perspective. So thanks. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on life 22.